Hello everyone, a couple of days ago I received my new phone, the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, the phone that I'm using to shoot this particular video that you're watching right now. My previous two phones were also from Samsung and I've been impressed with the overall performance and in particular the performance that they've been delivering with their cameras, something that made me well, purchase this phone as well. Also Samsung itself had been announcing that they will be implementing so-called dual pixel autofocus technology in the S7 and S7 Edge. Well, the average consumer and prosumers don't care a lot how the technology is called, whether it's dual pixel, triple pixel, or whatever, and how, what's the technology behind it, but and how it works, but whether it's working at all. And basically, yesterday I've been shooting my first videos, something I'll be editing and uploading later this week, and I noticed this particular technology working and actually I was so impressed by it that I wanted to make this particular video for you. So here it goes. So here we have a white Porsche and a Porsche key. A white Porsche, Porsche key. A yellow Porsche, Porsche key. A white Porsche, Porsche key. A black Porsche, Porsche key. An orange Porsche, Porsche key. A Porsche with a lot of colors on it, Porsche key. A Porsche with only one color on it. And again, a Porsche key. Now, I haven't been tapping on the screen, something that you usually have to do by, to change the focus of the camera. So, the phone is changing the focus automatically. And this is basically my main me message of this video. If you're a videographer or doing a lot of social media where video is very important and you're shooting a lot of moving objects, in particular, well, cars, I know those cars aren't moving, but I promise you they will be moving in two weeks when the season will be starting at the Nürburgring where I'm currently at, so subscribe to see moving cars. But anyway, if that's something you're looking for and you're also looking at a new phone, then I would highly suggest the Samsung S7 or S7 Edge. Yeah, okay, so since this video will be uploaded to YouTube and about out of 10 or out of 100, I don't know, people will be about 14 year old who are playing Forza Motorsport or Gran Turismo on their consoles and saying, oh, this guy can only distinguish a Porsche by its color. I can do it a lot better. Mm. So here it goes. This particular Porsche is white, yes, but it's also a Cayman, which is not a Cayman S, which means it's packing 2.7 liter engine, producing around 270 horsepower, depending whether you're measuring in horsepower, brake horsepower, PS, or whatever. This car has been built for the Nürburgring Endurance Championship in a particular V5 class. This car is being built by Speedworks Racing, um, the roll cage, some advertisement here, has been made by raceparts.cc, so it goes for that car that I'll be talking later about. Anyway, other noticeable changes roll cage inside that I mentioned earlier, new steering wheel, and so on. The, the V-classes of, uh, yes, the V-classes of Nürburgring Endurance Championship allow only, uh, I believe, around 5% horsepower increasement. So this will be packing around 260-70-ish horsepower, nothing crazy. Also only original, uh, originally equipped by manufacturer OEM body panels are allowed, so again, no crazy body kits will be fitted to it, but uh, if you're looking to do racing, the V5 is a nice class to, well, actually D class, the way you need to start racing, and this is equipped with PDK gearbox, something definitely you should be looking at, well, one of the cars that you can choose. The car next to it is yellow, yes, but um, it's not a Cayman like this car, but a Carrera, and particularly a Carrera 991, again, non-S, like this car, just a regular Carrera, because, like this car, the reason why it's a non-S, uh, it's allowed to participate in the V5 class, where the displacement is limited up to 3 liters. Here, this is a V6 class, which is allowed for two cars to participate, which have an engine displacement up to 3.5. And, as you know, yes, the Carrera is packing 3.5, but actually it's... 3.4 something something ish 350 horsepower again plus five percent in the end which will give us 360 ish 370 ish we will see again no body modifications that are allowed only safe safety increments so again 
roll cage, which is also built by raceparts.cc. Very nice performed. You can see it's also going through here. Very nice. I really like this roll cage a lot. Some brake modifications, but again, original by Porsche. Yeah, here are the brakes. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so the V6 and the Aeroscrum. The white Porsche that we have here is obviously the 14 years old who are playing for the motorsport and following the automotive media around the world. I've noticed that's a GT3 RS, which is different from this car. The GT3 RS is packing 500 horsepower, has been very, well, highly involved in what I call Porsche market, automotive market bubble, which will burst at some point and actually is bursting currently, which I'll explain later. So yes, this car has been purchased a lot and before the cars have been ever produced, they, well, the contracts of purchase have been offered for sale for between 50 and 100,000 euros on the internet. So only the contracts alone. And later, well, once the car was manufactured, they've been offering for the double of its initial price on the internet. And apparently some people were stupid enough, yes, I say stupid enough, to buy them. If we're talking about prices, one thing I want to mention as well about this car, not only the numbers, well, not only the numbers of the horses and so on, but in terms of the price, yeah, last year we had a customer who crashed, unfortunately crashed its Porsche GT3 RS, the 991, and we had to help him to look for replacement parts. Now, take a wild guess how much one of those panels costs. Actually, pretty much each of those panels. Yep, this... I shouldn't be touching it too hard, I may damage it. Every of these panels pretty much costs 8,000 euros. Yes, eight, eight. I don't have eight fingers on my hands and I use the other hand to hold the phone. The headlights, 4,000 euros each, so in total that brings us between 40 and 50,000 euros of the front. So this explains the reason why a lot of Porsche GT3 RS owners are not using the cars the way they should be used, but only store them in a garage and sell them on for higher profit. But luckily, or unfortunately, depends how you look at it, this car, which was like the, the car that has been leading this Porsche market automotive bubble, has been replaced by 911R. And while those cars have been, well, been offered for sale from well, one point, one and a half or two times more value than initial value, the 911R, which has been announced and released two weeks ago at Geneva Motor Show, they have been offered, well, a couple of days ago, it has been announced that they have been spotted on the inter, interwebs for sale for three times as much or four times as much as initial price because nobody knows the actual initial price. So a casual Porsche, a 911R, is currently being offered second-handed for around 750,000 euros or dollars. People, what the hell is wrong with you? Anyway. Then this black Porsche is the just a GT3. Yes, just a GT3. I'll be uploading a video soon about the top five things I hate about the GT3. And one of them is if you own a GT3, people will say, A, it's not a GT3 RS, or B, it doesn't have a manual. Which brings us to this car. Yes, it's a 997 Mark I GT3 RS, which is packing around 410 horsepower. But what's most importantly, or actually not more important at all, it was considered to be the last GT3 model of Porsche which had the manual gearbox. But again, like this car had a kind of replacement-ish thing of the 911R, this car, because of the 911R, Porsche had decided, hmm, maybe yes, there is some well, demand for manual gearboxes of the GT3. You know what? The next GT3 model will have a manual gearbox so those cars, who were considered the last model of the GT3s, of GT range cars, with, with only manual gearbox, well, they're not the last one anymore. And guess what that does to their price that people have been asking because it's the last new holy grail of the GT3, the last real Porsche. Yeah, it dropped a lot. So thank you, Porsche. Nice. Thank you for contributing and creating your Porsche market car bubble thing. Well, the last car, the Cayman S, so unlike the white one, it is an S model, which means it's a 3.4 liter, 
Originally around 310 horsepower, again, plus 5%, around 325 horsepower. Last time we measured it on a, on a dyno was having 225. Um, yeah, some battle scratches from last season. Nothing crazy, will be replaced soon, I promise you. Currently standing on its casual wheels, because the racing wheels are mounted on the white Cayman temporarily. Nothing crazy from the interior side, again some safety modifications, and so on and so on, and our ring garage delivery. Another reason to subscribe to my channel is because this car, yes, the Cayman S, and the Carrera non-S, will both be racing in a 24-hour race of the Nürburgring, and actually this car is also being confirmed for racing another 24 hours of the world, such as Barcelona, Solder, Spa, and so on and so on. Something I will be telling you more about, so I guess that's it. Have a good day.